Uh, Steve Graham Jr., president of uh, JR uh, Restaurant Group, owns and operates nine Outback, uh, Outback Steakhouses, one of my favorites, and also in West Tennessee, as well as in the SIP and Liza Serlo Loser, CEO of Serlo Agency. By the way, Liza, good morning. How are you? Good morning. Doing I just, very well. For, for somebody who's not here, I just wanted to let you know that I have the just the, the special drink there this morning. <laughs> Good. The, the Mountain Dew. So. That's it. Well, that's my husband, who's probably Absol- enjoying absolutely. it right now. With, with- I don't doubt it at all. <laughs> uh, Steve, good morning to you, sir. How are you? Good morning, Paul. Thank you for having us. It's been a challenging year, has it not? It's always challenging in the uh, in the restaurant business, any other businesses these Jeez. days. It's always challenging. Is is that not an understatement? But how's the business doing, though? I mean, as far as because the meat prices are not cheap. Oh, uh, meat prices are not cheap. Uh, poultry prices are not cheap, and nor yeah. are uh, produce prices. But uh, you know, as long as we continue to provide value to our customers and um, and not raise our prices in this economic time, especially in the state of Mississippi or in other states in the southeast, to be very um, community conscious, uh, you know, we'll continue to do fine over the long run. This is the third annual, it's called it, It's All Relative uh, Family Business Symposium. And and I mentioned this a little bit earlier. It's a great idea. You can register now. The, the uh, Family Business Symposium is going to be held at the Sheraton Flowood Refuge Hotel and the Conference Center. And I believe the dates are, correct me on this, September coming up soon, That's 10th right. and 11th. September 10th and 11th. Liza, just an overview of this. Uh, what is it about? This is the third annual. And I know... The last time uh, Steve was on, we got some great mm-hmm. feedback on this one. So a little bit overview of what this is about. Sure. The University of Mississippi wanted to uh, to just expand what they're doing with the Center of Innovation and Entrepreneurship. And it's under the leadership of Dr. Clay Dibrell and uh, Rich Gentry, Dr. Mm-hmm. Rich Gentry, and in the School of Business. So uh, Dean Sirey, um gave them the opportunity to, to go forward and to grow this out. And so Steve and I have been on the advisory board of the Center of Innovation and Entrepreneurship for a number of years. I was the chairman of the board, rolled off, and Clay and I were actually having a conversation of what could be next. So uh, we pitched this to the board of a legacy leadership program for family-owned businesses in Mississippi because they're very, very um, important to the state. But the other thing is that, you know, Paul, you and I go back to the 80s and the 90s. Yes. And remember, uh, you know, we had Jitney Jungle. We had Mississippi Power. We had uh, McCarty Farms and Sanderson Farms. And so when Sanderson Farms, we had the privilege of working with Sanderson Farms for virtually 25 years, maybe a little more. And when they sold, this was just um, a top of mind with me because we were dealing with all the knowing about the due diligence, what was going on at the time. And, you know, Sanderson Farms was the only Fortune 1000 company that was headquartered in the state of Mississippi after they sold to Cargill. There's no longer a Fortune 500 or 1,000 company located and headquartered in the state of Mississippi. And so the whole focus is how do we help family-owned businesses Mm -hmm. become the Sandersons, become the Ergons, become the... um, the Jitney Jungles and everything that that are that's here and was here back in the day, other companies need to come up and take their place. So you know how how do companies do that? And I don't know that we have the resources in the state to do that. And so Ole Miss stepped up to the plate and said, "Hey, we want to do this, and uh, will you help?" And so Steve and I yeah. are here to talk about Steve. That. Steve, because that family element is in there, it presents a lot more, pro- not only emotional problems, but legal problems. Mm-hmm. And, and the way you take that step is, is uh, some of the greatest guidance is people who've done it before in their experience. And I think that's one of the reasons you invite these folks in to talk. Yeah, yes, very much so. The, um, uh, one of the biggest things that people get out of this is to, to learn some, a road map in terms of trying to uh, mm-hmm. look down the road, uh, what's going to happen in the future? Do I have children that want to come into the business? Do I have children that have other interests? 
uh, what do I need to do to protect their interest? How do I grow my business uh, for my family uh, without selling it? Uh, how do I protect my employees? How do I protect my products and my relationship with our communities? Um, what happens if uh, I have to go outside uh, my family to get talent uh, to uh, foster the beliefs that uh, we grew our company on? You want to make some make sure you have somebody with the same value system, somebody that's like-minded, that's community-oriented, that's family-oriented. And mm -hmm. these are things that people don't think about on a day-to-day -day mm -hmm. basis when they're in the heat of battle running their family business okay. and trying to make sure their customers are happy, make sure their people are happy, make sure their products are priced accordingly with market and getting those products to market. And uh, it's just extremely important that this gives them a platform to yep. learn from other people that have been in similar situations of things that they encountered. Uh, that you may or not, may not have thought of in your day-to-day -day routines, that down the road you're going to be faced with some of these hurdles and obstacles mm -hmm. in your way, and you need to prepare for them early late, rather than late. Liza, I, I would think that the positive thing and the good news is we're not having as many kids as we used to have back in the boomer days where uh, the families were, you know, five to seven to mm -hmm. eight to nine. Now you got one or two. Uh, so in, right. in the future, that's going to be a little bit easier. It is. Workforce uh, is is reducing, and, you know, we work heavily in the aerospace defense industry, and that is a big, mm -hmm. big issue for all of them because, you know, the workforce it doesn't exist. They were not mm -hmm. born. And so one of the best things we can do is go out and start having larger families right now yeah. because there's opportunity for everybody. Well, I think everybody says that because uh, we, we we know we've replaced them with uh, of, of immigration, mm -hmm. but that's a whole other story. Yeah, yeah. I, by the way, congratulations because you guys uh, have a 40th anniversary coming up. We that's unbelievable. Do. It is unbelievable, and you know, and I admit it, I was a child prodigy. <laughs> So, <laughs> no, it was just like, how did that happen? How did 40 years ago? Jeez, go I, I remember coming by the uh, the office and sitting down and talking to both of you uh, as far as a few clients. And the long the cl list of clients back then were not long. Right. Nowhere is where they are now. That's right. And we've um, Crazy. been blessed. Yeah, very, very blessed. They're you remember who your first one was, first client? First client, first project right out of the gate was a three-month contract with the Mississippi uh, Special Olympics. So I handled the PR mm -hmm. for that. That was the very fit, How first about job. And um, <laughs> then back in the day, you had, uh, you know, I started at the Clarion Ledger, and when they gave me a, a map and put a red line around the map and said, okay, mm -hmm. go sell ads, and that's really, you know, uh, the they just kind of push you out the door yes. back in the day and yes. it was um but it made me fearless and so i uh grew it from there mississippi special olympics and then went on to uh working in the financial industry have we had savings and loans were really big then and it just you know grew oh, congratulations listen well, being in the business a long time uh mm -hmm. there are so many people on the wayside who probably made it a year at most five years Mm. Uh, so it, it, it's a tough business, and you have persevered. I do want to ask Steve when we come back, as far as the restaurant industry itself, w just a little bit of advice for people out there that, that he's been able to, to, to gain that knowledge over the years. When we return. But I was wondering if Super Chicken was going to pass on his business uh, to, uh, to, to the kids there from making guitars. You never know. Steve, well, uh, let, let's let's talk about this. The, uh, the 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 restaurant business, and is it a point where you you look at this and a possible bringing kids in and expanding, or because in, in some cases it's hard to live off of the same or, or say, a single unit. Oh, most definitely. My father was always, <clears throat> excuse me, my father was always a uh, very uh, big proponent of you didn't want to have one of anything. Uh, and you had to have multiple units to mm -hmm. make sure that uh, you could survive for the long term. One may go down, demographics may change in certain areas, customer trends may change in certain areas, but you had to have an, uh, enough units to where you could uh, have one or two not per per perform as well as the others and still be able to uh, support the combined uh, company. So uh, most definitely, you don't want to be single-threaded in the restaurant business if the best you can. Yeah. I want to ask both of you, is farming part of this also? Is that considered one of the things? 
Uh, absolutely. It's running a company. It's making those mm -hmm. decisions for succession. It doesn't matter what industry you're in. So, you know, farming is, is very important to the state of Mississippi. And um, those same decisions apply. Yeah. This comes out of the, the, the business uh, school at Ole Miss. I was looking at some of the things. You know, even we're talking about the need to go to college, and if you don't know what you're mm -hmm. you're going to do it. These, these are the courses that uh, will stay with you if you are an entrepreneur, uh, because they do it. As a matter of fact, one of them is an entrepreneurship uh, uh, course. That's right. Banking and financing, general business, management, marketing, professional sales, real estate. Uh, and also risk management and insurance. So just general business, too, if you are an entrepreneur. But the business school is a, a wonderful uh, addition at, uh, at Ole Miss. So what are some of the things, Steve, that you would advise people, first of all, and, and you will hear at this symposium? Well, uh, let's talk about the symposium just for mm -hmm. a moment. Sure. Uh, way to register, it's September 10th and 11th, uh, 2024, at the Sheridan uh, Flowood Refuge uh, Conference Center. Uh, you can register at CIEFB at business.olemiss.edu. Uh, today, we have, a, or as of last Friday, we had 144 registered attendees. This year's theme is on growth and succession planning. Uh, we'll also talk about estate planning. And we have key speakers, Ken Williams, the president and COO of Corinth Coca-Cola Bottling uh, Works, and John Stevenson, who's the vice president and the head of the Kathy mm -hmm. Family Office at Chick-fil-A Corporate Center. So we're really bringing in some people that have come from family businesses that have, have grown these in a multi-generational aspect and have gone through some hard times, hopefully not too many of them, but if they've been successful. And these people are coming in and speaking to you from their heart. They're telling you what they've yeah. encountered, what they did, how to plan, how to not how to be uh, action-oriented action versus reactionary uh, in times uh, as you go through these things. Uh, in terms of my business uh, and the and the uh, and the things that I've learned, uh, is that you've got to be good to your people. Uh, you've got to be good to uh, your communities. Uh, you've got to be involved, and that's one of the main reasons Liza and I are involved with Ole Miss CIE and the advisory board and the business symposium. We recognize that without a certain amount of leadership and foresight that a family business symposium from Clay and Rich and the guys at the Ole Miss and Dean Sari would never have come to fruition. And it's vital in the state of Mississippi to protect these family businesses, to grow these family businesses so that they don't get sold and moved out and shut yeah. down because it affects the employees, it affects the products, it affects the communities where these family businesses have grown up. And we need our young people in our family businesses to continue uh, to support the state of Mississippi and, and our economic way of life. And definitely uh, the agribusiness society and the agribusinesses in Mississippi uh, can learn from being part of this. Uh, it's all family related. And uh, that's one of the biggest things that I got, I've gotten out of this is meeting people, meeting young people that are in these family businesses, they're trying to find yep. their way mm -hmm. uh, to the leadership of the family businesses and the founders. What I do with my son, what I do with my daughter, do I let them sit on the sidelines and just garner a distribution check, or do I put them in a position in a family business, let them grow in that position, let them learn the business, and then if they're so uh, adept at running that, could try to give them more responsibility as they go. Mm -hmm. uh, but definitely keeping the businesses in Mississippi is the foremost priority for us and to grow those businesses for the state. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I don't want to get personal, but either of you have the kids coming up through the, the businesses? No. You, you know, Our, uh, I, 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 it's it's got to be tougher today than ever before, especially if you've got two or three kids. They've all got to be on the same page. Uh, the, the landmines out there, you two guys together there, uh, you better, as a business, have a very good public relations and advertising agency because the landmines, we're seeing them today. Uh, I, I kind of feel for where uh, some people are going through. Lowe's right now is going through uh, some turbulent times on on what may or may not be uh, factual stuff. Mm -hmm. Tractor Supply, mm -hmm. Harley Davidson, all of these landmines out there. When you per first built your first uh, uh, business, you didn't have all of these. Everybody didn't have a radio station and TV station in their hands. That's right. You're exactly right. You know, I, 
by attending the symposium, though, these companies, everybody who's dealing with the decision, you know, mm-hmm. and also, you know, are they going to position their companies to go public to no longer Good be point. a family yeah. owned business? How are you, you know, how are you doing this? And this is where you can hear transparent, authentic conversation from business owners to sh- that share their journey. We have had Steve opened up his challenges uh, two years ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, Doug Hederman last year yep. opened up his challenges of coming in and taking over. And it's tough business. And for another generation to come in and to do this, it's it's something that you have to be able to know you're going to, to face a lot of decisions. You're going to face a lot of pushback and and um, families are dissolved from that at, at yeah. some point. You know, uh, we had uh, Jeff Connolly talked yeah, about sure. his whole family split over the business. And so how do you avoid those landmines? What do you do? What plans do you put in place to make this better and to make that transition yeah. better? Um, Amy Walker with Ergon and her father have talked uh about it and told their story as um, she's moving in and moving up and an entire the third generation's coming sure. in into play here so all of this these people are there and so if you if you need that type of conversation if you want to ask questions if you need dialogue about the future of your company this is the place to be september 10th and 11th so so what you guys are saying basically is when this is over you'll have a better idea of uh uh, don't dare do it, or maybe it's a good idea we could do it well, one way or the other. You'll get a better idea. True, true. It, I mean, yeah. you can have a just an honest, authentic conversation with mm-hmm. your family of does this continue in our family, or does it end here, and yeah. do we find a private equity firm that specializes in middle market, you know, transitions and, and things like that, or is it uh, something that you're going to dig down deep and say, yes, this is going to be a multi-generational business, and this is how we're going to do it. Or or just sell it, take your share, and go do what you can do with it. Go to the beach. One way or the other. Mm-hmm. Hey, Paul. Yes, sir. Um, just uh, one more thought is is what this does for me is, is, or what it did for me, is it gave me a toolbox. It gave me a toolbox. It gave me a playbook. It gave me the contacts. It gave me the dialogue and the conversations that otherwise probably would not have, I know would not have been had with mm-hmm. my father uh, back when he was running our business. Uh, it gave me a starting point to go back and have a hard conversation. What are we going to do? How are you planning for this? And you have other people in the room that have already had that conversation, whether it be out of necessity or they were just better planners than I was. And you can sit down with these people, you can talk to them. They do not want to see you suffer in the same way they may have suffered in trying to do post planning after somebody's passing. That is the worst time to try and do anything in a, in a state of grief and, and everybody wondering where everybody's gonna fall out in a family planning issue or in a state distribution issue. So not only are these people available when yeah. you're there, but they're also available. You can get cards, you can call them on the phone, you can get their emails, and they will happily sit down or, or set up an appointment or, or a video conference and have a conversation with you because they are the 100, they're 100% bought in that family businesses in the state of Mississippi have to remain in Mississippi. It's a beautiful yep. location, and I think you'll enjoy it for a couple of days. It, and, and you deserve a little bit of a rest. And, 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 and not only can you rest, good shopping in the area. Uh, and when you're not in the meetings and when you are in the meetings, you'll learn a lot. Guys, thank you so very much. Liza, congratulations to you and Rick. Thank you so much. Thanks, Paul. Steve, always good seeing you, sir. Appreciate it very much. We have more coming up next.